I've had a long career. I wish I could say that my first day at work I could remember as if it was yesterday, but my memory isn't as good as it used to be. The only reason I can remember my first day at work is because I started on the 8th of the 8th, 88. So really easy to remember. Now I'm guessing that there are people in the room here that weren't even born on that date. Anybody younger than that date? Show of hands. Yeah. So I'm, I'm getting old. So my career now has been 27 years. Goodness. Um, and that 27 years has really taken me to this point today where I have the best job in the world. Now the great thing from your perspective is you can skip that 27 years and you can have the best job in the world today. The even better news is there are unlimited vacancies, there's no interview, you don't need to be in a position of authority or have uh, years and years of experience, but you could start tomorrow or today even. And I'd like to offer and extend an invitation for you to join me in making a transformational change to the economy and society of this country and potentially the world as well. Now that might seem like bold claims, particularly coming from a Brit. We tend to deal in understatement, skepticism, don't tend to show any excitement or enthusiasm. But I genuinely believe that BIM represents an opportunity to make amazing, real, significant difference to our country as a whole. And the next eight minutes or, or so, I'm going to explain and justify how I can make such a bold claim. We've heard from the other speakers about the value of BIM in design, construction, and for clients. And we've also probably seen a lot of communication over the years with respect to the government position on BIM. And most people will associate the government's position on BIM in relation to the mandate. Will we implement level two building information modeling on public sector projects by 2016? It's the most common association that people make when they think about government and BIM. And the driver for that is a 15 to 20% in capital cost saving on those projects. And that's a that's a big and worthy goal in its own right. That's savings in the billions annually for a public sector. But if you want to understand the broader agenda behind government support for BIM and change in the industry, you need to look wider than that. And going beyond the government construction strategy and really looking at the industrial strategy, construction 2025. And Terry's already made mention to some of the fairly ambitious goals around cost reduction, faster delivery in that strategy. But there's another section in that document that I think really articulates the government's per perception of the industry and its position on the industry in two pages. And that's a SWOT analysis. It's not in the glossy brochure, but in the PDF download, there's a SWOT analysis that the government has done on the UK industry. And it goes through point by point strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats and really explains the rationale for why government is so keen on driving transformation through BIM in the industry. But to, to understand this further, we need to look at that broader picture of the industry. Construction on its own is an industry that employs almost 3 million people in the UK. It contributes almost 7% of the output of this country. And if you extend that further to look at facilities management and property, so the whole built environment, we're talking about 15% of the output of the country and 75% of its fixed assets. Hugely important industry. But it's an industry that's inefficient and wasteful. It seems like every week there's a report that comes out highlighting problems, issues, deficiencies in the industry. Just this week, I believe, was the UK Industry Performance Report, highlighting, amongst other things, that three out of five construction projects are completed late. 60% of all projects are not delivered on time. And we see similar studies, similar reports, similar analysis, looking at cost, client satisfaction, and outcomes. Clearly, something needs to change. Across various studies, in a broad range 
there's an estimate of around 30 to 35 percent waste in the industry, 30 to 35 percent, which nicely correlates to the perceived savings that government thinks can be achieved by 2025 in whole life costs in the built environment. The 33 percent in construction 2025 is not capital savings, it's whole life cost saving. Now, if you take 15% of the output of this country and assume that a third of that is waste or inefficiency, that gives you somewhere in the region of 5% of the output of this entire country being attributed to waste in the industry. Now, that's not a scientific calculation, but all of the source data that makes up that is backed up with research and studies. And even if it's not quite that, it's of that order of magnitude. 5% of the entire workforce or the t entire output of this country is wasted at the moment. And it gets worse because construction is an enabling sector. Construction enables pretty much every other industry that exists within this country. Education is a great example of that. And Terry made reference to the fact that if we get clients specifying outcomes on their projects correctly, we'll get better outcomes, better teaching environments, therefore better education, better health systems, better business outputs. So take that 5% waste directly in the industry and add on to that the inefficiency knock-on effect of all of the other industries that depend on our built environment, our infrastructure. It's not just about buildings, our transportation networks. Inefficiency gets driven through the entire economy. And if we can fix that, that's a tremendous <coughs> opportunity to really improve both the economic and society impacts of this country. The other interesting thing about BIM is the benefit of BIM doesn't just relate to BIM. BIM is like a Trojan horse for change. It's a catalyst for other things to occur. BIM creates a compelling event for change to occur. I've worked with many, particularly public sector clients to date, and they all say in the past, we're too busy to think about doing things better. We're so driven by our operational goals that we don't ever take an opportunity to take a step back and say, what we're doing is inefficient and dumb and wasteful. It's just that we continue to do what we've always done because we don't have that time to reflect. And having BIM, as a transformation and the mandate to drive that change, it forces people to take that time to step back and reflect. They start to introduce changes that have nothing to do with BIM, but that opportunity has given them the chance for wider evaluation. So we see things like whole life efficiency, exports, the image of the industry, skills development, all being driven from a change that originates with the introduction of BIM. So we see all of these outcomes suddenly become a lot more achievable. When you first see these numbers, the first time I saw these numbers, I thought it was ridiculous. Delivering projects 50% faster, 33% whole life cost saving. Now I think these are actually a little bit soft. I think we can do even better than that by 2025. I also mentioned it's the best job in the world. Dan Pink, in his book Drive, has looked at the research around motivation for individuals. And he found that it wasn't driven by financial reward, it was driven by three factors, autonomy, mastery, and purpose. Now to me, the transformation that's being driven by BIM enables everybody to achieve all of these things. We get the opportunity to be autonomous. The leadership for BIM transformation in this country isn't coming from the top executives in companies. It's coming from people at working level. It's people coming from different roles where they're passionate about making a difference. And they're not driven by financial reward. People here presenting tonight aren't being paid to present here. You're not being paid to present. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly I'm not being present, paid to present. <laughs> but, but they're doing it because they're passionate about the subject. And they're demonstrating leadership through channels like social, social leadership and social media not because they're the top executives in their organizations. So I really believe that not only can we make that radical and fundamental change to our country and 
The eyes of the world are on the UK BIM Transformation Initiative. Every week I'm presenting to delegations from different countries. Just a, a two weeks ago we had Chile in to look at implementing similar things in their country. We've had China and Japan and Australia. Everybody is looking at what we're doing here because of the significance of what we could achieve. Now, if anybody, after all of that, is still skeptical, thinks that I'm overselling it, I say bring it on, because I saw another report about motivation of individuals from Forbes magazine, and then number three on motivating factors for individuals in their report was proving others wrong. <laughs> so, so bring it on. I really believe that we have a, a once in a lifetime opportunity. Government has tried to do this, as Terry said, for 70 years because they understand the prize that awaits us if we can get this right. And what we've seen with the traction that we're getting through the introduction of the BIM mandate and the real movement within industry to start adopting BIM, we have the chance to get it right this time. We just need to follow through. So please join me in promoting the BIM idea, adopt it within your organization, share it with your friends and colleagues. If we all embrace it and move forward with this change, then we can really make that, that level of difference and change. And if we can have that level of purpose in our work, why wouldn't it be the best job in the world? Thank you.